Hey guys, so today I'm filming my hit it or quit it thoughts on hauls number 16. If you have not seen this video from me before, I will have my playlist linked down below. And basically what I do in these videos would be review the items that I hauled 10 months ago. A lot of times, once you see an item in a haul, you never hear about it again, unless it's in a favorites or an empties. So what I do in these videos is talk about every single item that I hauled, letting you know my current thoughts on them, whether I would recommend them repurchase them or just pass and try something else. And my inspiration for this series was it's Kirsten and her what I thought on stuff I bought series. I will have her channel and her playlist linked down below. I will also link down below the original haul video. I will list and link all of the items for your convenience. And let's just jump right into it. This was a pretty decent haul. It wasn't too big, but I have a lot of great things and things I just have a lot of opinions on. And some of these things were Christmas gifts from last year and some of these things I purchased for myself. So first I'll start with the items that I had purchased from the CCL. So I had purchased four items during this trip, which is pretty good. The first one is the Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation in the shade 1W1 Bone. This is a foundation pump from Beauty MP. It did not come with this bottle. I purchased it separately online. And this used to be my holy grail foundation, but this is the newer version and it is not the same. The color is a little bit dark and the formula is a little bit different. I find that it is not as full coverage and it doesn't control my oil as well. I still love this foundation. It's still very impressive, but it isn't holy grail to me anymore, which is a big bummer. I wish that they never discontinued it. Every time I go to a CCO, I literally open up every single box to see whether it is the old formula or the new formula. I've not been able to find any more of the old. So this is a foundation that I'm using currently. It's a little bit dark for me, but I'm able to mix in my hard candy glamouflage to get my perfect shade. I do still love this foundation. I would recommend it, and I do think I would repurchase this. The next thing I purchased was the MAC Pro Longwear Concealer in NC15. I was really surprised to see this out of CCO, especially in my shade, because this is not a discontinued product. This is my holy grail blemish concealer. This concealer is phenomenal. I do believe it's worth the hype. This works for me during all seasons and all times of the year. It also works well on my under eyes and on my blemishes. Now, I don't use this under my eyes because I don't really need much concealer under my eyes. So I would much rather use something from the drugstore and save my expensive heavy duty concealer for my blemishes, which is where I need the most coverage. I think that this is a phenomenal product. Like I said, works for me, whether my skin is oily or dry, it works well for the under eyes or blemishes. Definitely love this. It's holy grail. I would recommend it. And I will repurchase this when I run out. Luckily, I only need a little amount. So it lasts me a while. Now, a big complaint that the majority of people have about the MAC Pro Longwear Concealer is that the pump is pretty finicky and it's hard to pump only a small amount. Seriously, I don't have issues because I use the smallest amount of pressure possible and just get out a little bit and I don't have a problem with it. Don't try to even pump half a pump because it will be too much. Just try to barely press on it, pump as little as possible and you'll be good to go. I've gotten so in the habit of it, I don't have difficulties and I use this on the daily. So definitely recommend that concealer. The next thing I purchased was the MAC Extra Dimension Eyeshadow in the shade Sweet Heat, which is a beautiful coppery color. And I have that swatched right here. This is very pigmented metallic shade. And I talked about this in my last monthly favorites, but I have discovered that the MAC Extra Dimension shadows are very pigmented. But if I really want them to show up as metallic as they look in the pan, I will layer them over the e.l.f. glitter primer and they just really, really pop on the eye. So this combination is incredible. I think the glitter primer is only $2. So you will definitely need to pick that up. They're a great combo. But the MAC Extra Dimension shadows are some of my favorites. They do cost more than the regular shadows. I believe they retail for about $20, but they come in a ton of great shades. And I do believe that they are part of the permanent line now, which is amazing. So I think Sweet Heat is a stunning shade. I would definitely recommend this shade and I would repurchase more colors from the line. The last item I purchased from the CCO was my MAC eyeshadow in the shade Fig One, which is this stunning matte purple color. And here is a swatch of Fig One, which is 
the most amazing purple. It was actually my final shadow in my MAC palette, which is very exciting. And Fig One is a stunning color. It is still part of the permanent line, so you can definitely get your hands on it. And it is so pigmented and the perfect purple. It would also pair beautifully with Sweet Heat on the lid and Fig One in the crease. MAC shadows are my absolute favorite. I find them to be pigmented and smooth without being powdery. So I have always been impressed with MAC shadows. They were the first shadows I fell in love with, so I've just gotten used to that formula. If you are someone that loves the Lorac Pro eyeshadow, formula then you might not love the MAC because they are very different. So then I had some things from Sephora and Ulta. So from Sephora I had hauled a sample of the Smashbox Photo Finish Pore Minimizing Primer and once I used that up I decided to buy the travel size. So just a quick money saving tip for you guys. Two of the deluxe sizes equal the same amount of product as one full size but you actually save money when you buy the minis these are $16 each and I believe the full size primer is $40 so two minis $32 one full size $40 and they both have the same amount of product so definitely go with the travel size if you want the most bang for your buck but this is the best pore filling primer I've ever used. I think Benefit Pore Fessial does nothing compared to this one. This works so great with my really deep pores and my oily skin. This has taken me forever to use. I still have a ton left and I've had this for a long time. So I would definitely, definitely recommend this to anybody with large pores and oily skin. And I will be repurchasing this when I use it up. Make sure you buy it in the travel size for the best value possible. Then I had purchased a foundation. This is the Kat Von D Lock It Tattoo Foundation in the shade Light 45. I believe this is the third lightest shade in the range, but this one seemed to have the most yellow undertone of the light shades. I do have a first impression on this foundation. I will link it up here if you wanna check that out. I love this foundation. This does give max, max coverage, which I love. And this does feel a bit heavy on the skin, but honestly, I have worn full coverage every single day, basically since I started wearing makeup. So I don't notice when things feel heavy on me. So I am not the best judge when it comes to that. But I have heard from a lot of people that this feels too heavy on them. I think this would be great foundation for anybody with normal combo or oily skin. I think if you have dry skin, you would definitely need to really moisturize because it might dry you out a little bit but if you are looking for max coverage you have a lot of scarring pigmentation acne to cover up this foundation will be amazing for you the Kat Von D Lock It Tattoo and the Estee Lauder Double Wear are my favorite foundations that I've tried so far I don't know if I would call either of these holy grail in their current formulas but these are the most impressive foundations that I own right now so definitely recommend this one and I probably will repurchase this when I finish it up the next thing I had purchased was a palette and this was a Christmas gift. This is the Tarte Amazonian Clay Rainforest After Dark Palette and this was supposed to be limited edition but a year later it is still available so I'm assuming this has now been added to the permanent line. This is an amazing amazing travel palette because you have a highlight bronzer blush and you have six shadows. These are such stunning fall colors. You do have some wonderful warm tones, a nice purple in there. The quality of this Tarte palette is really impressive. I actually haven't tried any Tarte shadows before, but if you're contemplating this palette or the Tarte holiday palettes, I would recommend this one from all the Tarte reviews that I've watched from people that I really value their opinion. They were not impressed, but this is a good palette. I do have a chit chat get right with me using this palette. I'll link up here. This is a great quality palette, but I don't reach for that very much. And it isn't because of the palette, it's because of me. I am not a palette person, I've decided I purchased two palettes in this haul and in next month's hit it or quit it you'll see I had purchased two more palettes and since then I haven't purchased any more because I've discovered I'm not a palette person I love single shadows and I like customized palettes. pre-made palettes are something that I just don't gravitate towards except for the balm meat matte nude other than that I just don't reach for palettes so I definitely learned my lesson stop buying palettes because they are pretty expensive I did basically get all of these as gifts so I didn't purchase them um, so that justifies it a little bit for me I'm still happy to have this palette in my collection it is a great quality product amazing for travel so I would recommend this palette for you guys if you're looking for a holiday gift for a friend or for yourself this is great quality especially if you are a palette person or you would like a basically all-in-one palette to travel with 
really really good one and the size is not too bulky either and then I did purchase one other palette this is the Anastasia Tamana palette and one thing that sucks about Anastasia palettes is that all of them have been limited edition so if you want them you really gotta jump on them and the Tamana palette comes with 10 shades now it seems like with each palette they've added more shades the Omrezi Maya Mia and the Tamana only had 10 shades the artist palette and the shadow couture world traveler had 12 shades and their self-made palette that is coming out soon has i think 14 shades and that one costs 34 dollars. this one costs 29 anastasia palettes are the best value out there in my opinion in terms of palettes most palettes retail for about $50 and this palette was 30 so if you're looking for a palette to give to a friend and you want to spend some money on them but you don't have a really really large budget the Anastasia palettes are definitely the way to go it's also a great gift to ask for so of the three palettes that had come out at this time the Omrezi, Maya Mia, and Tamana the Tamana palette was definitely the one that I thought I would use the most and while I still think that would be true based on the colors in the different palettes, I've barely used this. And again, it's not to say anything about the quality of this palette. It's for the fact that I'm just not a pre-made palette person. But I have used a lot of this shade Bengal. It's amazing. It's an amazing matte shade. Very pigmented, very smooth, not powdery at all, which I love. So I'm definitely loving the quality of the Anastasia shadows. I'm thinking about making my own palette and doing that as a holiday gift this year because the shadow quality is really, really impressive. I definitely think it's right up there with MAC and Makeup Geek for my favorite shadow formula. And I think this palette has a lot of great matte and shimmer shades. You have some nice pops of color and then you do have a warm tone, cool tone, neutral shade. So I wish this palette was still available for you guys to purchase. But all of these eyeshadows are sold individually on the Anastasia website and on the Macy's website. So unfortunately, I haven't used this one enough. I think I need to try to do a weekly palette challenge. My friend Amanda from Amanda Alexander is doing that and she's really enjoying it. So that might be something that I try out in 2016 to make sure that I use my palettes. And once I fall in love with a particular look, I will reach for the palette a lot more. So I'm definitely going to do that with this palette because like I said, the quality is phenomenal. I think the colors are stunning. I'm just not reaching for it as much as I should. The next thing I had purchased was a Bare Minerals Marvelous Moxie Buttercream Lip Gloss in the shade Forbidden nude. I have that swatched right here. This is a beautiful peachy pink nude. I do have a review on these lip glosses, which I will link up here if you want to check that out. These are really, really nice lip glosses. They do have a nice opacity to them. They are a little bit sticky, but I just feel like that means they will last longer. And I find these pretty comparable to the Buxom lip glosses, which are my other high end favorite. So there are only two shades in this line that I own. The other shades are aren't really my cup of tea, but the formula is incredible. I think that the buttercream glosses are exclusive to Ulta. A lot of times they will include them in the holiday sets as well. So definitely recommend the buttercream lip glosses if you're looking for a high-end lip gloss. They are really great quality and have a lot of really pretty shades. The last item that I had purchased from Ulta was the EOS Smooth Stick and Sweet Mint. And I watched back on that haul so I could basically just see you what I was thinking when I was purchasing those items. And that was the first time I had found these stick form of the EOS lip balms, which are now holy grail. I have gone through so, so many of these. And you can find these at Ulta in their little mini display at the checkout. These are incredible. I love EOS lip balms. They are my favorite. I find the texture to be perfect amount of thick and thin. I would say it's in between Maybelline Baby Lips and the Burt's Beast lip balms. Sweet Mint is my favorite scent. The stick form comes in the mint vanilla and a red one that's either cranberry or raspberry. I'm not too sure. Or passion fruit. I don't really know because I don't get that one. But I love the mint. I love the lip balms in the stick form. I find them very very convenient for on the go and to put in my pocket. 
Then I had purchased two Maybelline products from Rite Aid when they were 40% off and I am waiting for another Maybelline 40% off sale because there are a couple things I want to pick up. The first thing I don't have here to share with you because I have finished it, that would be the Maybelline Define a Brow Eyebrow Pencil in the shade Dark Blonde. That is one of my holy grail brow pencils. It does a great job of drawing onto brow hair and onto skin. The Dark Blonde shade is perfect for my hair color. I find that it is very long lasting. Seriously, one of my holy grail brow pencils. I think it only comes in dark blonde and two different brown shades. So the shade selection is not the best, but the formula is incredible. So definitely would recommend it. And then the other Maybelline item I purchased was the Maybelline Creamy Matte Lipstick in the shade Divine Wine. I have a review on these lipsticks as well, which I will link up here. Divine Wine made me fall in love with deep lip colors. And because it is a matte formula, it does stay in place without feeling too dry. This is a really creamy formula and there is a swatch of Divine Wine. Even my boyfriend really loves this color on me, which surprised me that he was a fan of deep lip colors, but this is holy grail to me. The formula, the shade, everything. If you guys have not tried out the Maybelline Creamy Matte Lipsticks, you are missing out. They have a ton of great shades and Divine Wine is my go-to winter holiday lipstick. Then I had purchased a couple random things from here and there. The first thing was the Beauty Spoon. I purchased this from Walmart and I use this to scoop out the rest of my foundations from the bottle so I'm getting all of my money's worth and I'm glad I have this product is it a necessity not really but is it useful yes I actually wish that I had purchased a different beauty spatula one that was smaller because this one is still pretty big and it isn't easy to get this into everything like for instance I think it would be really hard to get it into the Mac Pro Longwear container because it is pretty small also I find it very hard to clean because of this shape right here there is still some foundation stuck in there that I just couldn't get out when I was trying to clean it so that's kind of annoying. Then I purchased a couple nail polishes. The first one was 50% off at CVS. They were discontinuing these CoverGirl Glowing Nights Gloss Teenies. This is the shade Hashtag After Dark. Haven't worn it yet. I know, like shame on me. I haven't worn this polish yet. I'm definitely going to. I'm going to try it out. It's a really pretty color, so I can't tell you about the formula, unfortunately, because I haven't tried it. I can't believe, I can't believe it. I hate that. I hate that I haven't tried that polish and it's been 10 months. Then I have another nail polish. This is Essie Warm and Toasty Turtleneck. I purchased this from Designer Fragrances and Company, which is a basically a Lancome version of a CCO that you find at a lot of outlet stores, but this is not as good as a CCO in my opinion, but they have Essie polishes for 50% off and this is a really beautiful shade. This was opaque in two coats, which is pretty impressive for an Essie polish. This is a really great grayed out dusty lilac shade. It is pretty unique for anything I own in my collection and I've worn this once and I do like it. I need to try it when my nails are long. When I test out a polish on short nails, I tend to like it less. So I need to wear this one again. It will definitely be one that I reach for in the winter time. It's a stunning shade. And the last thing I had purchased was the Glisten and Glow Stuck on Blue Base Coat. And unfortunately that did not work for me. I felt like it actually made my nail polish chip a lot faster than my holy grail standby of the Revlon Colorstay base coat which was discontinued but very fortunately my friend Amanda Alexander sent me two backups and I am just applying nail polish thinner in the one that I'm using right now so I will have those base coats for hopefully a long time and I was not impressed with that glisten and glow base coat because it did make my polish chip so I sent it to my friend Amanda I'll have to ask her opinion on it my nails are just like really really sensitive and finicky with polish so the Revlon Colorstay base coat is the only base coat that has actually ever worked for me so I was disappointed that the glisten and glow base coat didn't work but I wasn't really surprised because my nails are so finicky but if your nails aren't butt heads like mine I would definitely recommend you check it out their HK girl top coat is holy grail status to me so guys that would be my hit it or quit it thoughts on hauls number 16 I hope you enjoyed this video if you've tried out any of these products please let me know your thoughts in a comment down below thank you so much for watching please rate comment and subscribe and I'll talk to you soon bye guys